Hey, are you looking to build more user empathy as a PM? This video is a part of a series of videos which will help you achieve just that. So tune in. Hi guys, my name is Arushi and welcome to my channel. Executing powerful surveys is one of the best ways to gather more insights about your users. In this video, I'll tell you about the four steps that you have to follow to become a survey ninja. Before we move any further, if any of you has ever run surveys before, please feel free to comment and share your learnings in the section below. Did you know that 42% of startups fail because there was no need for their product? The best way to discover the product market fit for your product is to speak to your users. And mind you, you are not your user. Surveys are the best way to do it. So now before we move any further, quick definitions. A survey is a list of questions which is designed in a way to extract a specific set of information from a specific set of users. Key benefits of this methodology are, number one, it's a super low cost way of gathering insights about your users. If you use something like a Google form, you can also do it for free. Number two, it requires very little time commitment. You just run your survey and let it flow and the data will come back to you eventually. Number three, allows you to cast a really wide net. You can choose as many people as you want to send the survey to and see how they respond to it. And finally, it can be a very good way for you to capture suggestions, feedback on your product. Before we move any forward, let me paint a very real world example for you where surveys helped me. Back when I was working in India, I was building the referral program for one of the startups. We had a problem there that the number of referring users had flatlined. In this situation, surveys really helped me in gathering quantitative data about my users. So now using this scenario, let's cover the four steps that I promised you in the beginning of the video that we need to run a survey. Number one, identify the problem that you're solving. For example, like, like in our case, we wanted to increase the number of users that were referring. Number two, think about obstacles that they might be facing. To figure this out, you may brainstorm with your team, with the customers directly or with customer facing teams. In our case, uh, we were able to find two alternatives or two alternate problems that the users might be having. One, that they were not finding the value proposition of our program. Or two, they were not able to use our product. Number three, identify your sample survey set. Here you have to keep two things into account. Number one, that your sample survey set should be randomized enough that there are no biases in it. Number two, it should be statistically significant so that whatever responses you get are enough for you to take any decisions. Here, you must also take into account that your emailers would also have certain response rates. For example, a survey sent on an email would have a 5 to 10% response rate and on your survey itself after opening, a 5 to 10% people would probably respond to it. So send your surveys to enough number of people that even after this conversion rate, you have enough responses. And finally, design a kick-ass questionnaire. Let's get further into how do we design a good questionnaire. So let's look at this question that I designed for my referral program. So the question is, how would you rate the value and quality of the referral program at our company? And there are four options. It's great, it's okay, it's bad, I hate it. So there are a few issues with it. Number one, the question itself is a double question. It's asking the user to rate both the value and the quality. Here, if you ask a double question, eventually you'll not be sure if the user has rated for the value or for the quality. So you should avoid double questions at all costs. Number two, the question is bipolar. If you see the options, they're either positive or negative. There is no space for anyone who does not have an opinion. Now, you may choose to have this because you may want to push your users to pick either a positive or a negative side. However, you will be alienating those who don't have an opinion. So take this with a pinch of salt and decide for your use case if you want to put, push them towards an opinion or you don't. The next thing, this is a close type question where there are just options and the user has no area to show their own opinions. When you're asking for feedback, it'll be great if you can also ask the user to justify why they chose a particular option. Such questions are called as open-ended questions where the user can answer by themselves. One thing to keep in mind when you're putting open-ended questions is to not use too many of them. Keep one or two open-ended questions in your survey at max. Now let's correct our question. The right question should have been, please rate the value of our referral program with the options being excellent, good, average, bad, and pathetic. They should also follow up with an open-ended question asking them for the reason for their rating. Now, coming to the things that you need to be careful about before running your survey. Number one, we researchers have our own biases and it tends to come into our questions. 
make sure that you put none of the above or others as an option in your survey. Number two, the longer your survey, the lesser the number of responses you will get. So make sure that your survey is short. And number three, don't ask uncomfortable questions like what is your salary, who would you vote for, etc. And finally, my recommendation for the tools that you can use to run your surveys. The first is Google Forms. It's a very easy to configure tool and it's free to use. Second, you can also use SurveyMonkey. It has a lot of configurations around randomizing questions, etc. So that's it for surveys, guys. Thank you for watching this video and please leave your comments or feedback in the section below. And if you're interested in improving your career as a PM, please subscribe to this channel and follow the videos. Thank you.